Hello, my name is Tim Jones and I'm the librarian and archivist at the Christchurch Art Gallery and I thought it might be interesting today just to have a look at one of the items that's in the gallery's archive collection and uh, what I'm going to talk about is the list of subscribers uh, who uh, found the money to uh, purchase Pleasure Garden by Francis Hodgkins. Uh, we have that list in the uh, archive collection and uh, it uh, hopefully will um, explain who some of the people are, what their connections were, how they knew each other and what was going on and maybe what their motivations were and uh, finally uh, whether we can draw any conclusions from what they were aiming to achieve. Uh, you'll be aware, I'm sure, of the Pleasure Garden incident, so-called, where Francis Hodgkin's painting Pleasure Garden was uh, offered to the gallery, rejected, big drama, lots of letters to the paper, and eventually it was accepted because a group of people got together and found the money to buy it and more or less uh, tell the uh, gallery that it was theirs if they wanted it. So th there's a list uh, that we have in the archives. You'll notice that the credit line is purchased by a group of subscribers, 1951. So, as I say, in the archives we have that list of subscribers there they all are and I thought it might be interesting just to uh, whistle through that list and just see who these people were and what they had in common and what their uh, aims might have been in in doing this and see if there are any conclusions to be drawn so um, we'll go uh, t straight into it uh, the first person on the list is Margaret Frankel she was born Margaret Anderson uh, and she was from the Anderson engineering family uh, reasonably well to do. She lived at Rising Home in uh, Chumley Ave in Christchurch, the home that had been built by William Pember Reeves in the 19th century. She was herself an artist, a potter, she exhibited with the group, and she married Otto Frankel, and who was a seed scientist at Lincoln, head of the Wheat Research Institute, a, a very eminent early geneticist, really, and uh, she was his wife, and uh, she led the charge to get this painting accepted with uh, the largest donation, 15 guineas. So that's Margaret Frankel. The next person on the list is Alan Brassington. Here we have a bust of him aged four, uh, created by his father, Claudius Brassington, who was a monumental mason and uh, sculptor. And uh, Alan, there he is, age four, grew up to be a, a lawyer in Christchurch, a solicitor. And uh, he gave the sum of ten pounds. Next on the list is Rita Angus. Don't really need to say much about her. Uh, obviously one of New Zealand's most distinguished uh, painters. Uh, the only thing perhaps of interest there is that she gave the enormous sum of 12 guineas. In uh, 1950 she had had uh, very serious health and financial worries and uh, uh, yet uh, there she was donating the second largest amount to this campaign. Uh, and I have no particular explanation for that. I guess it's a measure of how strongly she took the uh, need to uh, have the work in the collection of the city. But uh, there we are, Rita Angus, 12 guineas. Now, the next person on the list is Mr J.R. Delahunty. I'm afraid I can tell you nothing about him. There is a jeweller in Dunedin called Delahunty. Uh, whether there's any connection there, I cannot tell you. But if anyone knows... Uh, what uh, Mr. J. R. R. Delahunty's business was or um, what he was doing, uh, we would love to hear from you. Uh, the next donor was Caxton Press. Of course, we know perhaps that Caxton Press was founded by John Drew and Dennis Glover in the 1930s and uh, by 1950 was certainly a very distinguished publisher of uh, commercial printing but also of uh, fine uh, hand crafted things, many of them created, drawn, designed, printed by Leo Bensman. His is a name that crops up uh, as a link between uh, many of these uh, groups. So this is two guineas from the Caxton Press. The next person is Cora Wilding. Cora Wilding, also a, 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 an artist, a painter, sister of Anthony Wilding, the tennis player, and uh, she was a physiotherapist by training and was a big mover and shaker in the uh, youth Hostel Association Development and in the Sunlight League, the people who thought that sunshine was the cure to many of uh, many medical problems. So there we are, Cora Wilding, two guineas. The next person, J.H.E. Schroeder, was a school teacher who went on to become the uh, editor of the Christchurch Press 
literary pages, and this at a time when the literary pages of the press were really very significant. They carried a lot of poetry and promoted a lot of the Canterbury poets whose names uh, will crop up in this list. Uh, he then later went on to become the director of broadcasting. He was a regular broadcaster on subjects about language and literature and world affairs. Uh, J. H. E. Schroeder, two guineas. The next person is Albion Wright, another pal of uh, the Bentzman and Glover um, uh, group. And uh, we uh, have this fine painting of him by uh, Leah Bentzman in our collection. He uh, founded the Pegasus Press, which uh, uh, also was a, 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 both a commercial and a fine uh, publisher. The next person is Dorothy Crompton, who gave a guinea. Now, Dorothy Crompton uh, was the director of uh, the Rising Home when the Andersons moved out and when it became the Rising Home Community Centre. Uh, there's a nice picture of Rising Home as it looked yesterday afternoon. It's just a few uh, metres walk from where I live and there's a plaque outside commemorating Dorothy Crumpton. Um, she was a school teacher from Invercargill and she served as the first professional director of this community centre. And the community centre was uh, established and uh, ran uh, pottery, uh, choirs, music, craft, uh, all, all sorts of things. Um, th th there's a link here between uh, uh, d d uh, Margaret Anderson, of course, Margaret Frankel, who, whose home this was, who was also a potter, and we'll come later in the list to other other people with strong connections to, to Rising Home. The next person is C. H. Bowater. I'm afraid this is another one where I can tell you nothing. Anyone have any clues? Would love to hear from you. Uh, the next person is Douglas Lilburn. Don't need to say too much about him. He was, again, in, uh, a friend and intimate of uh, Rita Angus, who we've already seen on the list and would certainly have been known to many of the other people. Uh, one of probably New Zealand's most uh, distinguished composer who uh, donated one pound. Uh, we then have Mrs M Frankel again. I have to assume that this is Margaret Frankel again. She found another 10 shillings and put herself on the list uh, twice. So I can't quite explain why that would be, but there she is again. Uh, the next person, Miss O. Spencer Bauer, Olivia Spencer Bauer, again, a very well-known Canterbury painter, gave the sum of 10 shillings. Uh, much has been written about her. I don't need to uh, go into her life history too much. You can find plenty about her elsewhere. Uh, then we have a few that I can't help you with. I wish I could. We have uh, somebody called Anonymous, big figure, ten dollars, uh, ten guineas, I should say. Apologies, and I'd love to know who who that person was. We then have J S, five shillings. Miss G Townsend, ten shillings. Mrs. M. Ziffer, 10 shillings. There are Ziffers around. I I've, I've see Ziffers in, in the newspapers, but can't quite nail who this Mrs. M. Ziffer is, so uh, suggestions welcome, please. And likewise, Mrs. T. T. Thompson, 7 guineas. The next person is Dr. F. Kral. The only record I can find of him is that he was a Viennese doctor who had uh, chambers in uh, High Street and, and also had a practice in Patton Street in uh, uh, in Avonside, so um, maybe as a German he was a, uh, a an associate of uh, Otto Frankel, as a German speaker I should say, because we see that he's uh, uh, from Vienna, or at least trained in Vienna, so I can tell you nothing more about this chap than, uh, than you see on the screen, would love to know more. Then we have another anonymous, we then have BM or BN perhaps, uh, again we don't know who that is. The next person is Mr. A. E. Flower. Now, A. E. Flower was a uh, teacher at uh, Christ College, a pupil, in fact, and then a teacher at Christ College. Spent really most of his life there. Um, you may, uh, if you were a Christchurch person, perhaps be aware of Flower's Track in Sumner and Flower's House, one of the residential houses of Christ College, both uh, named after him. He was very much an administrator. The photo on the left, you can see that he, at this stage, is in fact the uh, president of the CSA, the Canterbury Society of Arts itself, uh, but I don't think he had an art background particularly. He was very much an administrator. He seems to have been on the committee and of just about everything. He was um, uh, a sportsman and a churchgoer and he's on various committees uh, administering various things throughout his life. He was uh, on the, uh, the um, board of the University of New Zealand and of Canterbury College uh, for various periods 
uh, and a and a uh, as I say a big connection with Christ College, Mr. A. E. Flower. Then we have another anonymous. The next person is Doris Holland. You don't need to be told that this is uh, Doris Lusk, another of New Zealand's most uh, celebrated uh, artists and uh, potters and uh, uh, teachers. And she, of course, also taught at Rising Home and would have been a, a friend of Margaret Frankel. Uh, so uh, there's a, an, another connection there. The next person on the list is Winston Rhodes. Winston Rhodes was an English professor at uh, Canterbury University and a lifelong socialist, a communist, I suppose you'd say, a, a friend of Russia and China, right through from before the war into the 50s and 60s and 70s when uh, that position uh, was distinctly uh, out of uh, out of fashion. But he uh, stuck true to his beliefs and was a man of the left for his whole life. He edited uh, Rewi Ali's poetry. Uh, he introduced um, English modern uh, writers to the University of Canterbury syllabus, people like D.H. Lawrence and Virginia Woolf and T.S. Eliot. And he in fact introduced New Zealand literature to uh, Canterbury University syllabus as well, people like Janet Frame and Frank Sargentson. The next person on the list is Colin McCann. I don't think you need me to tell you anything about him. There's a plug for Peter Simpson's magnificent book which appeared last year. Colin McCann gave 10 shillings. Uh, the next person is Mrs. Uno Smith, E-U-N-O-E. -E. Uh, uh, I don't know anything about her. I didn't even know that the name Uno was a name until uh, I started researching this. If you know her, please tell us. The next person, uh, the next uh, couple, I should say, Mr. and Mrs. H.B. Mornsell. Again, I am in the dark, so uh, please enlighten me if you can. Then we have CRS, same story. Next person is Naya Marsh, three pounds. By 1950, Naya Marsh was pretty well established as a writer. She would have written half a dozen or more of her detective fiction novels by the time the, uh, this list was being compiled. And she would have, was well established as a, as a literary figure. Uh, three pounds was her donation. The next person is Hethcote Helmore. Hethcote Helmore uh, was an architect. Uh, if you uh, Google uh, images of Hethcote Helmore, as uh, I did to try and find an image, uh, of course what you get is a page something like this with all the beautiful uh, houses and other buildings that Hethcote Helmore uh, designed. So he was an architect, uh, quite a well-to-do architect, uh, and also a very generous benefactor uh, to the uh, Robert McDougall Art Gallery, our predecessor gallery. He, amongst his most uh, notable uh, bequests, was the uh, physician by Hé Do, uh, which of course we treasure very much now. So that's uh, Hethcote Helmore, the architect, two guineas. Now we have somebody called Bon Marsh, and then we have somebody called Art Student, both giving small amounts. And finally on the list we have Julia Scarvel. Now you see on the screen Canterbury College Mountain Biological Station in Cass. This is the uh, visitor's book of the uh, station at Cass. And we've got the page there of, for 1936. And um, of course this is the trip that uh, resulted in Rita Angus's uh, uh, very well-known painting of Cass. You can see right at the bottom, it is quite hard to read, uh, three people were there in May. Uh, Mrs H Henderson, so that's Louise Henderson, uh, Miss Rita uh, Mrs. Rita Cook, which is uh, Rita Angus, and Julia Scarvel. So the three uh, women went on this painting expedition in uh, May 1936, uh, resulting in some uh, very well-known uh, paintings. Julia Scarvel was an art teacher at Christchurch Girls High School. So there's the list again. There they all are um, uh, in all their glory. As I say, there's a few gaps there. We don't know who the people are. Would love to love to learn who they are, if you can share any information with us. Um, it, it's fair to say that uh, this is not a crowd. This is not a popular movement from the streets for uh, bringing modern art into the Robert McDougall Art Gallery. This is very much a group of people who all knew each other, whose paths intersected professionally, through the group shows, through the university, through Rising Home, uh, who all, all knew each other and uh, you, you would have to say 
uh, are really a clique of, of people with similar views, slightly left-leaning, progressive, and uh, uh, I can uh, well imagine that the uh, powers that be at the CSA and the McDougall would have found this uh, kind of pressure uh, pretty annoying, and um, their reaction, uh, you can almost imagine them boxing themselves into a corner, and the more they said no, the more the other people said yes. It's interesting to look at the ages, the, the average age of the people on this list who, who I've been able to identify is 46. Uh, the average age of the, the three villains of the piece, Kelly, Woolwork and uh, Baverstock, who uh, were declining the uh, acceptance of the work, their average age was 66. So it's, it's, it's not absolutely cut and dry, but there's certainly a, an age difference, there's certainly a generational difference, that this is a younger a group of people who uh, are objecting to uh, the uh, attitudes of an older group. So there we are. Um, there's the uh, painting again for you to have a look at. Uh, those are my views on that uh, list, that uh, it was a very well organised, a very small, very select um, uh, clique, I don't hesitate to use that word again, of people with very definite views on the matter and by no means uh, a popular movement at all. In fact, I suspect that the people of Christchurch remained as baffled by uh, modern uh, non-representational non art uh, after this uh, um, incident as they had done before. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, look at the uh, Pleasure Garden list of subscribers. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's not quite so straightforward a story, and uh, hopefully uh, we've... Uh, learn something new and I hope you enjoyed the talk. We'll be back soon I hope to talk about more works from the Christchurch Art Gallery Tapunaro Waifetu. Thank you very much.